Hello everybody and welcome to today's content, or should I say, welcome to Season 2. I'm excited because not only is today the start of a new season, it's the start of my first season as an ambassador. Being an ambassador means I can make all kinds of new connections and one is my guest here tonight. It's none other than Warrior of Light, aka Alamir. Let's take a look at some of his highlights from recent games. All right, so here we are, Alamir. I mean, we tried to do this a couple of uh, weeks ago, didn't really work out, so now we're here now. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on, I'm excited. All right, so the, something I like to ask all of the uh, guests that I have here in my community spotlights is, what brings you specifically to Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier? Because me specifically, I didn't really play Final Fantasy games before this, but I love competitive Battle Royale. So what specifically brings you to Final Fantasy for a soldier? I am a 20 year plus Final Fantasy veteran. So I, I've been playing since uh, back. I still remember playing like the FFA demo disco that came with a, it was like a free, it came free with an order of like Pizza Hut or something like that. So uh, I've been playing for a long, long time. Not a first person shooter player, not a battle royale player, just a big Final Fantasy fan. Seven is my all time favorite. So if Square Enix is going to throw free, free to play uh, content my way, you better be sure I'm going to be jumping on that to play it. And I actually fell in love with the game. It's, it's a lot of fun. Love playing it. Big learning curve, but I'm still enjoying myself. Even though I've I've gotten killed quite a bit, <laughs> still having a lot of fun playing the game. That's good to hear. Uh, something else I like to talk about with people, and it's kind of related to the the content we have coming up today, uh, is a lot of different things because this is a mobile game, and you said that you you're trying to like have that learning curve. Is there's a lot of different controller setups. Personally, I've played on mobile. I played with trigger controllers, and I played with um, an Xbox controller. What controller scheme do you use? I started with just the basic touch that they gave us, and then I switched to a Steel Series Stratus XL controller, and that was fine when the Chocobo meta was everything. But aiming is really difficult if you're just using melee and Chocobo kicks in the beginning of season one. Then yeah, it was great, but once they nerfed Chocobo, I kind of had to switch up and realize I cannot shoot with a controller and some of the bugs as well where it just starts automatically shooting. So I switched back to touch using gyro, but I am a console player. My whole life I've played consoles and even with my PC games, I always have a controller. So I went and bought this from Amazon, which is a four trigger phone holder. And this little thing, which is basically a joystick um, so that I can still do some of like the little spinny movements that some people do when they're like opening chest. It's really hard to do that on touch control because you'll accidentally like go a little bit too far away and it'll cancel the spinny animation. Oh, look, you got it there too. I nice. do. I have yeah, the exact I love that same thing. one. Do you have the one with the fan built into it? I don't have the one with the fan. My phone doesn't really have a whole lot of like overheating issues with this game. So Mine doesn't either, but I, I, the built-in fan was so big for me. Like that is so much like, I was like, that's amazing. That's so cool. I do have to get one of those joystick yeah. thing though. That that's a game changer. I didn't even think of that. Uh yeah. I haven't really had any issues with it. And it's better in my opinion than just using the the touch. Because like I said, doing 
like the back and forth or just spinning around in a circle while you're trying to open a chest, don't get sniped or whatever. Although, I mean, snipers just been nerfed again. So they're not, <laughs> they're becoming less and less of a threat as time goes on, but it's easier. And that way you don't move away from the box and it takes up kind of a little, I can, I can move, I can make my joystick cursor very, very small with this. I can make it incredibly small and then I just have to place it on there sticks to the phone and it works great that that's like i said that's a game changer i gotta i gotta look into that and as far as the sniper, i don't want to stick on it too much but as far as the snipers go it's only a nerf outside of ranger if you're a ranger it's still fair game like snipers are are fair game so i think it was a ranger buff more than a sniper nerf sure. uh all right so um Today's community spotlight is it's to focus on you, but it's also to focus on tips and tricks for solo play. Um, I want to start off with guns, and I'm going to do this in a two part because today is the start of season two. So, what was your favorite gun setup prior to today? And then speculate what you think your favorite gun setup is going to be for season two. Gears, obviously. Anybody who plays in Season 1 and has been playing knows that Lethal Gaze is a pretty powerful weapon. So that one's always in my first slot. The second one kind of changes based on my circumstances. I've always switched back from either Defense Bane, Bomb Launcher if I can get it, because I main Ninja, and then the Mark V Sniper Rifle. And I'll switch those out interchangeably just as I happen upon them. But my preference is if I can't get a Bomb Launcher, I would prefer to have Lethal Gaze and the Mark V. Um, but bomb launcher with Ninja, I, I don't think I've ever lost, at least not in the last month. If I faced an opponent as a Ninja bomb launcher and they forgot to pick up a shelter ring, I've won that fight every single time. Fair enough. I mean, there, in that intro clip, we saw one where the guy did have the shelter ring and you were just smart enough to start throwing fireballs instead. Yes. Um, all right. So let's, let's take a look at some of that gameplay real quick. All right, so we saw a little bit in, in that clip there, and um, it's something that is key in solo play, and that's positioning. Uh, we talked earlier, actually, you and I in Discord about having the high ground and the importance of uh, positioning. So talk to me a little bit about your mindset in solo when you are positioning. To the map, I do try to stay on the high ground. That's why I think Ninja is super... I think Ninja is the best class. I don't know if I want to say overpowered, but I think it's the best class because of how quickly it can get to the high ground without needing something like Arrow. As so I, it also frees up a whole other material slot because I can use the air, the air knife to throw up to a higher position. Then I can continue running up the wall. Then if I still don't make the distance I need, I got a double jump and I can go up even higher. So Ninja is able to get to the high ground really quick with the double jump and all the different things. So getting to high ground is important. I, I know I sent you a lot of clips where I was, I think there was one where I took on a ninja and a warrior in the final round. And all I did was stay on top of a building the whole time. And they were down below me. Um, high ground, high ground, high ground, in my opinion. It, it's easy. It, it's hard. And you can see in some of the clips I sent you too, it's hard to shoot fire at somebody up on a hill, and up on a house. Super easy to shoot fire downwards though too. It's also easy to shoot downwards as far as people shooting at me. Um, if they're behind cover, that's great. But if they're out in the open, all I have to do is take a couple steps backwards and now I'm, I'm in cover. They're down there. They have nothing. I could be, we could both be on flat planes, but if I have the high ground, I just have to take a couple steps backwards, whereas they have nowhere to go. And so high ground is key. All right. And we saw it in that last clip and we'll see it uh, in this next one. 
And it's something that I personally think is important. And that's constantly moving and using your resources such as materia to rotate or to force your enemy to rotate into position for your favor. And I mean, I think this is the clip you were just talking about. So let's take a quick look at that and how you use positioning to your favor. Am I able to talk while you're showing the clip? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little bit of a delay, but we can try. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. So as you said, the uh, this is the clip where you have the warrior down low and you're fighting between the, the containers there. And he puts out yeah. a blizzard to shoot up and then you're just constantly using that cover like you were just mentioning, going back and forth. And then uh, finally you fi you finish it off with throwing a fire down and that forces him out from his cover and then you just laser him. Yes. And yeah, this is super funny. He's wasting his mana throwing blizzard on the ground because blizzard's not going to hit me while I'm up on the building. <laughs> a couple steps back, it's it's not going to do anything. Exactly. And that's... I think that Oh, God. I was going to say, I think that was the ninja I killed. What's funny in speaking about positioning is right after that, I killed the same. There was a warrior and a ninja that were both in there with me. And I killed the warrior last in that one. And speaking of positioning, the warrior made a big mistake. And I've made this mistake a lot of times is he had the, the hazard zone to his back. Now, in the first phase, sure, it's not that big of a deal. But that hazard zone is essentially like another another enemy. So if you have an enemy in front of you and then you have the hazard zone to your back, you're put into a very dangerous situation. And I think I fireballed him into the hazard zone and that's how the warrior ended up dying. He was way too close to it. That, I mean, I gotta say that's happened to me plenty of times. I I end up like the first like you said, the first couple circles, you, you can play in the in the gas a little bit, but then you get to that into those final circles and you think you're doing okay, you do you know doing okay, and then all of a sudden you get knocked back and you just barely touch the Mako gas and you take that one tick and then you're you're done because either, even if you get back in, you're in a bad position. You're going to probably get lasered as soon as you get back in. Yes. All right. So let's move right into our next clip because it's on the opposite end of the spectrum of what we just talked about. And rather than uh, about positioning, we're going to talk about patience and also learning from our misplays. So let's take a look at the clip and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, so this one, you're you have the high ground, and then you end up losing your chocobo. So you go aggressive, which is okay, but you end up missing your gravity, unfortunately, and that causes oh, no. you to have to rotate out into the open. And then that from that you get third party because I mean there was a third person there the entire time, but they they get the open shots because you have to rotate into the open. Now what happened was the first mistake I made was if you saw this guy right here that um, the guy that killed, wait, no, he, that's not the one who killed me, but the, the, the monk that was coming after me. Yep. The first mistake I made, you see me try to shoot him with the executioner. I thought I had a lethal gaze on me. And what had happened like a minute before is I went to go pick up the executioner for one of my LMG or for my LMG. And what I accidentally did instead was I picked up or I dropped the lethal gaze and I picked up the executioner. I wanted to get rid of the LMG for the lethal gaze. So that was my first big mistake. The second one, I wasn't paying attention. You know, I saw final zone and I, I think I had played a couple other matches that day. And it was like the final zone ended up being me and one other person. So I got into this mindset. Oh, final zone is me and one other person for some reason. I didn't look up in the corner and see, Hey, there's three people right now. It's you and two other people. So if you, if you if you go earlier in that clip, and I, I know you may have seen it, I used my chocobo to try to see what he had. I found out he had blizzard. I found out he had thunder. And then I got to the high ground completely unaware that there was a third person out there because I was too stupid to look in the left-hand corner and see, hey, there's a third person. <laughs> so that was my first mistake. And then, yeah, running out into the open uh, was another one. Uh, 
shouldn't have gotten aggressive as soon as I saw that other player. I probably should just let them duke it out and be a little bit more patient and then take the other one out, reassess, realize, got, probably should have gone back and gotten my lethal gaze because it wasn't that far away. It was still in sector five. So yeah, a lot of mistakes on that one. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many times that I've I've done that where I think that I'm switching the right gun and I switch the wrong gun and then I go to I go to start a fight and I'm shooting a sniper instead of an assault rifle or something mm -hmm. hilarious like that. And every single time it it just gets me in the wrong position and then I I end up making mistakes just like you did in that clip. So it, and it, you you touched on it a little bit and it's it's that mindset where you're in the mindset of you know, final circle was you versus one person every single time, but you can't lose that mindset of this is a free for all, especially when you're not in teams where at any time there's good, could be someone that comes up behind you. So you have to constantly, like I said, be moving, rotating and keep in that position um, and being just aware of where your opponents are. Um, another thing that is something you want to work on is the, like we said, the mindset leads on to what I've been calling builds, and I say that term very lightly, um, you want to use them more as guides. And more or less, when I say build, I mean the thing that is comfortable to you, the thing that um, fits your play style, and you want to play this every single time. Just because you don't get it every single time isn't a bad thing, but it's good to feel comfortable on something. Um, is there a build that you have, Alamir, that you feel the most comfortable on? Yes. If I make it to the final circle and I have a lethal gaze, a bomb launcher, a shelter ring and a jewel pendant, fire, gravity, and cure, um, eight high potions, and the rest is heavy ammo, I feel pretty comfortable, which is always a good thing. You don't want to feel comfortable and get complacent. You don't know, you may not know who you're going up against in that final round unless you've been watching the kill feed carefully. But I feel a little bit more confident going to the final round if I know that's my setup walking into it. All right. Well, I mean, you were talking about a little bit here and there throughout this uh, this event here. So let's take a look at some clips of the Bomb Ninja. Some of, the, some of the ones I sent you, I don't know if you have any that you're about to show, but even some of these were after the nerf. And so the nerf, I mean, it was a, it was a slight nerf. I mean, if we're being honest, even though it dropped at 20 damage, this thing is still super deadly if you don't have a shelter ring. Yeah, they so I like the way that they've been balancing things and, and the bomb launcher is one that they uh they are doing now and they mentioned it is they have a couple different ideas of what they can do with it, but they're gonna take their time and only do one thing at a time and see how it it affects the meta. And I'm happy that they did it that way because I mean like you said, this this is still a strong gun, but it might not be as strong as it was. But that was a great counter to it right now too so I, i'm kind of conflicted on does it need to be nerfed does it not need to be nerfed i don't know because it's not that difficult to find a shelter ring the more you play i usually find one pretty quick whether you know the rng blesses me and i get a bot that brings it to me or they're only 80 it's 80 gil and there's plenty of material machines they're usually really easy to find they're the bright green ones and i think shelter ring is always a priority i faced off against nox dm the other day and it was pretty early on in the game. And so I had a bomb launcher and guess what? He didn't have time to get yet. He didn't have a shelter ring. And guess who won that fight? Is Nox DM a better player than me? 110%. I think Nox is a much better player than me, but because he didn't have the shelter ring, that's hard to overcome that bomb launcher. That it is very tough. That is a very solid build. And if you do get comfortable on a build such as that, like it's good to prioritize that when you get into a game. Um, it's good to have backup strategies. Like you said, if you don't get the bomb launcher or you don't get the shelter ring, there's other strategies to have. But if you have like a set style, like personally, I don't like fire. I can't aim it right. So I run warrior with, with thunder because I'm going to get in close and I'm just going to put it down on you and I'm going to beat you in melee. That's just my style. Whereas you, like you said, you like to have the high ground and bounce around with the ninja and shoot bombs down on people. And that's a different, an entire different style. And both work very well in the game. And I think that's pretty much my favorite part of this game is the fact that there's so many different play styles that all are viable and especially in a solo setting. So it's good to just define the thing that you're comfortable on and really practice that and excel at it. 
And I think that's really good for solo queue. Yeah, and one more thing about the shelter ring. If you if you getting a shelter ring to me is is super important, depending on who you're kind of go up, going up against. Because if somebody does rely heavily on the bomb launcher, that will throw them off their game when they see reduced zero damage. <laughs> they realize their biggest arsenal is like completely useless, and now they have to switch up how they've been killing people all match. Yeah, you you mentioned that. I mean, I mentioned it earlier that in one of your clips, you actually shoot a bomb launcher at somebody, realize that they have a shelter ring. And then, like you just said, you had the mindset quick enough to remember, hey, I have fire as well. So you start shooting fires instead. And what's nice about my setup with the four triggers, my fire button is right next to my fire button. So th this, uh, these two fingers are how I kill people. Yeah, I do the same <laughs> thing with my, with my triggers as well. All right, so I have one more thing I want to talk to you about, and then uh, we can hop into a game here. Um, and that is, it is season two, so... I want your early prediction on what you're going to run on Dragoon for a build. Um, it could just be the skills and traits and stuff if you want, or you can throw in some materia and guns if you'd like. Whatever you'd like. Just talk about Dragoon a little bit. Yeah, right now, Shelter Ring and Jewel Pen are still the smartest play, because if somebody throws out a Bomb Launcher or a Bio, that, that's a game changer. If you don't have some kind of counter to those two, it's not that often that people use Bio in the final circle, but I've had it happen a couple times. Uh, and I was super grateful that I had a jewel pendant and I just walked right through their bio and killed them. So the accessories don't change for me personally. Um, unless they do what I've been saying, I've been asking them to do and put in the suggestions. I think the lightweight shoes should help you get out of gravity faster. Then that's going to, that's going to be a big change for everybody. Lightweight shoes are going to become a must. I'm going to say lightweight shoes and shelter ring are probably going to be the most important things if they would do something like that. Um, we'll see what they do with gravity. Personally, with the Dragoon, because he still has the ability to get up high really easy with the high jump like Ninja does, I don't, I'm still not going to equip Arrow. So I know some people really like Arrow. Vernius uses it really well. I'm still not using it because I like to have Cure in that slot instead next to my potions because in a gunfight, depending on how that's going it's nice to just be able to pop cure and then keep shooting on somebody if all they have is potions and that's what they're relying on i can pop a cure i can switch to another weapon if i'm out of ammo and, and kill them maybe they're a better shot you know I, I don't and i don't drain their 200 before they drain my 200 but if i have a cure halfway through that i can boost if i have a curaga i boost my hp back up and now i can take them down um so i'll, I'll still probably rock cure Lethal Gaze, I know they nerfed it a little bit um, where they kind of mess with the accuracy after a certain amount of shooting, but um, you were in the match that I played earlier this morning, and I was still killing people left and right with that thing. So I, I think the Lethal Gaze is still better than the Combat Rifle. We'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll bounce back and forth. The Combat Rifle, just for me, I don't know. I used it early on, but it, we'll have to see what some of these buffs do. It's the it's fire rate weapons. with it with the the mod. The fire rate is super high with the mod right now. The mod two, and that's what's making it is gonna make it strong. I don't know. It's what what's nice is I'm pretty active on like the Facebook and the Discord, so I'm sure once somebody comes out with a build, I know it's Vernius's favorite gun. I bet he's happy about them buffing that gun a little bit. But I'm uh, uh I'm excited. I'm gonna interrupt you for a second. Um. Uh, for somebody and myself, for somebody to start putting down the stats for the other two uh, skills that come with uh, Dragoon, the Dragon Favor and the Dragon uh, Ire, I want to know how yeah. much, how much, M I know one of them gave us the numbers in the patch notes, but the other one didn't. And I want to know how much MP I'm taking away per swing with the other one. So I need, I need someone to do some testing for that. Uh, I'm what using Dragoon every single match right now. I've been playing but, Dragoon a lot, that, yeah. Yeah, that's just to level it up to 60, because I have all the other classes mastered, obviously. Um, but I'm still, I'm not going to be using Dragoon Melee. It's going to be very rare that I use Dragoon Melee because of gravity. Until they do something with gravity, I'm not getting in close. <laughs> See, I, don't, just, I, don't, I just must not have that fear. I just go, I go in Melee. I mean, I play a lot of Warrior, though. Like, I only play Warrior. So, like, that, that has to be my mentality. And I... I'm very mobile on my warrior where I'm 
if I go in for a fight and I know that I don't I don't hit my my dash or something, I'm out of there instantly. Like I'm running right, I dash away, or I use my rush to get away and I rotate back around and I reposition, or I miss my thunder or something. Like I'm constantly moving, so I understand what you're saying as far as the gravity goes, but I I still like on Dragoon, I'm still gonna be like slamming down and attacking and. It is very slow, the the melee, but I think with the dragon's favor, all of the stuff that you get on those melee swings are going to make it worth it. In PvE right now, I really don't like the dragon's combo that much. It's It's been kind of... I've, I've honestly switched to using guns on PvE, which with Ninja, I would just always do the attack-attack animation. Yeah. Or like bombs or even the cutter, but the dragoon's melee... It's kind of all over the place. It's kind of hard to aim. I keep missing bombs a lot. So I've switched to just, I'm just, I'm just going to shoot this thing. Yeah. So I, I do agree that it is like really hard to aim it. And I think that it's going to get the quality of life buffs that, uh, that monks melees are getting right now. I don't think it's going to get as as far as a range as monk. Cause it already does have a, like a dash to it, but I think the lock on is going to be more consistent. Like the monk, like they did with the monks, uh, lock on. And I think that's going to change the melee a lot. Because I don't think that I, it is very slow, but so is like the sorcerer. And if you can hit the sorcerer attack, it's 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 a good attack because it, it, it would do the knockback and you can recover and so on like that. But right now, it's just hard to hit that that melee for the dragoon. I don't think that it's hitting light. I just think that it's hard to hit it. So once they maybe if they add that like hit marker to it a little and it, it make it a little better. Yeah. And then I didn't I didn't say the other gun I'm probably going to be running with the Dragoon, but it's I'd probably just do the Mark V, especially with the ability to get up high. Uh, you're probably going to see me getting up on top of mountains a lot while I'm leveling Dragoon. Uh, actually, the one clip I sent you from last night where I had a really nice spot. I mean, I, I've never been in... Well, I've been in that spot before, not that exact spot, but man, that's a nice little sniper's nest I found. Yeah, that was <laughs> and I saw it. I, yeah, nobody could. Nobody knew where I was. You see the guy when I when I pegged him the first time, he dropped a blizzard, and he, he had no clue where I was. And that blizzard had no clue where I was either. I mean, it, it, I don't even think it went off. He dropped the blizzard, and it just stuck there because I was so high above him. But you know, you get the little red symbol, so he's like, "I think somebody's this way," but and then I just finished him off, and he had no clue that I was that high above him. And same with the other guy. I, well, actually, one of them did find me earlier but he was also sniping as well lane prone by the way which i don't suggest i've killed so many people lane prone not a good idea all right so that's pretty much all we have planned for talking about tonight so i want to say thank you for for joining me and talking about solo queue and talking about your uh your style of play and what you bring to uh the community as a whole um so thank you for being here thank you for having me all right. Is there? I any... love what you're doing for the community, like the the tournaments and stuff, and some of the having different people on and discussing their their gameplay. Um, I love that stuff. Given the play by play, that's really cool. Um, is and I love the podcast episode with Varinius, uh, you and Crane Carry. I listened to that in the car while I was driving around. That kind of stuff's uh, really interesting. Hearing people talk about um, different classes and how they use them. That was interesting. The discussion on Ranger. Yeah, so I have a couple different uh, topics. I just have to find people to talk about them. So clearly, uh, if I do a topic on gravity, I'm going to have to bring you in on it because you are very strong opinionated on that. So uh, there is some other ones uh, coming up. So I appreciate you doing that. And I will reach out to you for some other content. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find your content? on youtube under warrior of light i i twitch i do twitch a little bit you know maybe live stream once once a month but i'm most known for either um my youtube channel warrior of light for some of the final fantasy content i've done there and my memes on a final fantasy group called final fantasy memes jokes and other funny or other fun stuff i'm one of the mods over there i've been there for like a year and so uh there's over like 300 memes final fantasy memes on that page so they're all pretty funny. And I think I made a meme compilation for season one for the first soldier as well. Yeah, you pretty much have, you have a, uh, I don't want to call it a meme page as well, but you have a Facebook uh, Final Fantasy community page, or first soldier community page as well. And that's, I love seeing all the memes that pop up on there. Like, I feel like, I feel like there's some, I feel like there's some cross-platform memeing going on there between your two channels. Yeah. <laughs>